Let's create your ad extensions to optimize your Google ads, timestamps below, along with some other helpful links and resources, like a super deep dive into Keyword Planner and our Google Ads playbook. So jumping into our interface here, the first thing we want to do to create our ads and extensions is to click on ads and extensions. Once we do, we'll click on extensions and then we'll click the blue plus button and we'll be able to see all of the different types that we can create. Now, before we go into creating our site links, our callouts and structured snippets and call extension, let's quickly go through what each one of these actually looks like when it comes to how it appears in Google. So first up, we have the most common, which is site links. And no matter what type of company you are, you should be using site links because as with all extensions, you don't pay more for them to show up. Google just decides if they want to show these. Now, the first example here we have from walmart.com, we can see shop online pickup today and store locator. And then for Amazon, it just shows the headings. So Google decides whether it shows the heading and the description, or if it just shows the heading. And of course you can make as many of these as you want, and you can actually make these for specific ad groups or campaigns, or just have some for the account level. Now, the next type we have are call out extensions, and these are essentially just a list of features or benefits for your product or service that can be added on after your description. So the second two ads here are an example of what these actually look like. So you're just gonna have 15 characters and you're just gonna list out some features or benefits of your offer to hopefully get people to click on your ad. Next, we have structured snippets, and this is a menu of items, right? So, or a description of your different product SKUs. We'll go through structured snippets in more detail so you can see your different options depending upon the type of business that you run. Call extensions are great if you're actually going to pick up the phone. <laughs> so if you're not standing by on your phone, don't use these because it's just gonna be a waste of your, your cost per click, right? But these work really well, especially with something like water damage where someone probably wants someone to show up and fix that water damage ASAP. Now, when it comes to lead form extensions, these are really cool because they allow you to collect contact information directly from Google. So the first one we have is from quicksilver.com and you can sign up to win a trip to Hawaii. The second one is another water damage example where if someone doesn't necessarily want to call, they can go ahead and click on the get started site link extension here or lead form extension, and then they can fill out some information so they can get a free quote on their particular water damage, which is definitely not fun. And so again, with all of these, you can add as many of these as you want, and it's not gonna cost you anything extra. So you might as well go all well out here. Now, if you have a physical location, you can go ahead and create a location extension or affiliate location extension. Although I don't really see these too much anymore. Most of the time, they just gonna put Google Maps on top, right? Then we have our price extension. This is great if you're in e-commerce and price is important to you, right? So if you are selling anything luxury, this is probably gonna work against you. But if you're doing run of the mill products that and pricing is something that you're competing on as opposed to brand or luxury, then you can actually include different details about your specific products. And then people can actually just click like more here and they can actually go directly to the page on your site that has that listing of ski pants or ski hats or, or whatever it may be. Then we have app extensions, which I could not find a good example. I, I spent a good 30, 40 minutes trying to find and I could not get Google to give me one of those. But if you're doing any sort of app downloads, you should just do a campaign specifically for app downloads as opposed to using an extension anyway. And finally, we have promotion extensions. These are great if you have some limited time things and you can actually set and start an end date for this. So if you have a limited time promotion and let's say it's just for the next two weeks or it's gonna be in two weeks, you can tell Google when you want this extension to show up. And this is just an example deal, 70% off brands. And then someone can go directly to whatever the sales page is for those particular deals. So let's go ahead and kick things off by doing the most common uh, extension here, and that's going to be our site link extensions. And it's always hard for me to say add extension because I always wanna say site link extension. So the first thing you're going to want to do is decide whether or not this extension should show up at the account level. This means any campaign everywhere, it shows up for just one campaign or it shows up for just one ad group. Now in an ideal world, 
you would set up these for each individual ad group. But hey, we don't necessarily have time to go through all through 20 or 30 ad groups that we have or however many you're starting with. And so you're most likely just going to start at the account level. So we'll go ahead and click on create new here or you can use existing if you wanna mix and match. There's some advanced things that you can do. And I'm going to jump over to uh, our Google Ads campaign builder, and I'm just gonna quickly copy and paste these in. Link in the description if you'd like to learn more about that, because you can actually directly upload these instead of going through this tedious copying and pasting process. So I'll go ahead and copy the rest here, and I'll go ahead and paste them in. And now we can see a preview all over here with our desktop-based ad. So you can see we have our headline, and then we have the two description lines here. Now the description lines are not always going to show up. So you want to make sure that whatever you put as your site link text makes sense without any description. And when you create your first four, they have to go to different pages on your site. So you can't have all of these pages, all of these links going to the same page. Once you've created your initial four, you can create more site links for the same page. So as an example, because it's a little confusing, let's say custom marketing plan. I wanted to see, try out saying tailored marketing plan or personalized marketing plan, and I want it to go to the same page. Now that I have four site links, I can go create two more site links and have it go to the exact same page and then just change out the headline to see which headline works better. So site links are also a place that you can optimize. Just make sure you have a minimum of four before you start duplicating your URLs. Otherwise, Google's going to be upset because they want you to have at least four site links. So just think of this as a great way to segment your potential customers. Of course, you don't want to send them to a random page on your site just for the heck of it. Make sure that every page that you're linking to is going to push them one step further down your sales process, whatever your sales process is. So we'll go ahead and click on save here. And now we have a preview of our site links and you can always click here to go through and see your other site links that you've created. And I'm going to stop saying site links now and start saying call out extensions. So with call out extensions, these are going to be a lot more basic. They aren't going to link physically to any extra page on your site. So I'll go ahead and just leave it at the account level. So you have a lot of options when it comes to what you can do with your callouts. I like doing descriptive features or social proof. If you have any sort of certifications or industry seals, these are a great place to put those. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop in some features of our particular offer promoting a Facebook ads agency. And these are going to rotate and they're not all going to show at the same time. So Google is going to go through and figure out which one of these callout extensions and which combination of them they think is going to work best for you. So the more the merrier here. And for callouts, I do recommend going through the extra steps of at least creating them at the campaign level. For time purposes, I'm just doing it at the account, but because you're probably going to have one product or service per campaign, it would make sense to go through and make sure that your callout extensions are really specific to whatever that offer is for that campaign. Now also, something that we skipped in the last one, you can come down here to advanced options and you actually have the ability to create an ad schedule. So as we talked about with the example of the deals or the promotions, sometimes you only want to show these uh, for a particular date, peer range, or a particular time of day. So you can get really specific here. Unless it's really, really important, I recommend just leaving it alone um, because it's not gonna make that big of a deal. But especially if you're doing something like you have leads coming in and you need to pick up your phone to get that call or you're doing something else with store hours, then adding some times and date restrictions might make sense. So we'll go ahead and click on save here. And then we can scroll down and we can see a preview of our different callout extensions and how they would look at being added on to our different campaign, our different ads that are inside our campaigns. So we'll go back up here, click the blue plus button, and then click on structured snippets. So I'm going through the ones that irrespective of your type of business, you should definitely be using these. So once we click on structured snippet here, I'll go ahead and skip the account, um, the account setup. You can do account campaign ad group, just like everything else. And here you're going to select a header. And so essentially what this is, is this is allowing you to give more information about your specific, specific, Pacific, oh boy, specific product or service, or 
in this particular instance, we're going to have a menu of items. And so hopefully one of these makes sense. For example, neighborhoods, if you're a real estate agent, you would list out all the neighborhoods that you service. Or if let's say you're helping with water damage, maybe you want to tell people the different neighborhoods that you can quickly get to within 24 hours or something like that. So we'll go ahead and click on service catalog and I'll just go ahead and paste these in. And so you can see how this is added at the end of the ad. Now, most people, like 9.9 .9 out of 10 people, who are searching Google, they're not going to know that this is an extension, right? Because you can see we have description one, and then these are actually our site, our call out extensions. And then where it says service catalog, Facebook ads, Google ads, Instagram, blah, 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 blah. That is what we've put here. And not all of these are going to show up again, right? So just because I put, let's say I put 20 in here for some reason, right? That doesn't mean Google's gonna list out all 20, right? They're going to optimize for us. They're going to figure out which combinations they think work the best and get the most clicks. And of course, when it comes to your date and time settings, you have that available to you under advanced options. I'm going to go ahead and click on save here. I'll go ahead and scroll down and you can see a preview of your structured snippets. Now on this particular page, you're always going to be able to see all of your ad extensions across your entire account for your ad groups and your different campaigns. And so this is a great place to go when you're trying to figure out what site links are performing well for specific ad groups or on your account as a whole. So I'll just come back over to campaigns and now it's just time to sit back and wait for the data to start rolling in. So thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe for more deep dive tutorials just like this one. Check out the link in the description to our Google Ads playbook. It is full of all of our recommended settings, tips on how to actually write high converting ads, and some keyword formulas for your negative keyword lists and keyword research to make sure you choose the right keywords for your campaign. So until the next, keep building the business you love.